that's and like I say, this is where all the magic happens, right, right here. Yeah. Because if you don't get it right, the the the, the air better, doesn't flow right, right. Right, and it'll give you the breathiness. It'll give you choppiness. Yeah. It just it doesn't sound clear. Right. It's cold. Yeah. But you can feel the air yeah. when they're cold, how it flows through them. Yeah. It's cold right now. Yeah. It'll be a little brighter up there. And you're not performing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't even think about it. Now we'll take this hole. This is our two cylinder hole. And just kind of clean it up a little bit. In and out. Yep. Yeah. Then we turn it over, and we take and we use the flat side down. Yeah. Because we want to shape that, and that needs that to be. Angle. Yep. It's got to be at about thirty-seven to. 45 degrees optimum and then you'll look and you see I've got a little see how thick that little edge oh, is yeah, there yeah. so I gotta take a little bit more off so you try to probably make it about, about eighth of an inch maybe or six yeah feet. really it's supposed to be uh, oh about one fifteenth I guess it is okay yeah but it depends on what sound you're looking for. Yeah. Like I was telling you that. You so each angle would give it a different sound. Well, it'll, the the thickness of that edge yeah. will change the sound. See now that's pretty thin now. Yeah. But it's not quite thin enough. Right. Now this hole, theory is if it's ramped. Yeah. It it the air flows smoother. So and you don't get ramp towards the front or yeah. ramp. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll ramp just like this. Yeah high-tech tool here. <laughs> you just want that so you're not causing an eddy. Right. When that air... Yeah, nice and smooth. Yep, when it flows yeah. up here. Yeah. Then we turn it over <clears throat> and we'll do the same thing here. So we've got two amps going in two different directions? Yep. So really what it is, is it's, exactly. it's one yeah. ramp. Yep. Okay. It, it's the ramp that... So it's sort of like if you had a had a drill at, at the right angle, mm -hmm. you could get both sides at the same time. I used to do it that way. Yeah. It took too, it, it's just too hard. Oh, yeah. You know? So this way I started using the Dremel. Originally, when, you, when, you first, when I first started, that's what I used. Oh, yeah. Everything. I would start yeah. like this. Yeah. You start with your hole, then you just start working it like this. Yeah. And take it down. So there we have our uh, ramp yep. for our slow air chamber to our splitting edge. This will be the flue where, yep. where the air comes up, travels through the flue, it'll have the block over it. Yeah. And that will uh, focus the air to the Is there to a certain the ramp. distance or uh, this this ramp, yeah. I usually make it about five eighths of an inch long. Yeah. Or you you can go so longer. So that's going to connect both of those. Right. right. This is going to connect these hole this so. this hole with this hole. Yeah. Some guys they ramp right up right up to here. So oh yeah. This will be ramped all the way. Wow. Uh, I like to have a little short area. Does that give a different sound? It must give a different sound, right? Well, it it settles the air. It gives that air time to settle. Yeah. Where if it's shooting right up and out, right, the air doesn't really settle down. Right. I think. Yeah. Now there are engineers that will, you know, they'll argue things with you. <laughs> Just from my experience, I I leave about a five eighths inch. That's enough. It compresses that air, sends it across the splitting edge. Yeah. 
on some of my flutes, I'll even make it longer. Oh, yeah. I have some that it's probably an inch and a half long, the flu. Yeah. And that calms it down even more. Um, there's debate that the, you, you know, <laughs> this style of block where the, the flu is cut in the flute itself, yeah. or you have some guys that make them where the flu is cut in the block. And there, there's debate, which is more responsive? Right. I think these are more responsive, they right. tend to be. I, I've, I play them both, but I think you get more response and you're able to manipulate the air a little better with with the flu and the, right. the flute. So now we're just gonna cut this, we'll cut this right here, and this part I do by hand. Yeah. Use this little hand plane. There you go. So there you go. So you just go down a, just a bit. Yep, it goes down. That should be approximately one thirty second. Yeah. Of an inch. Yeah. And then this will be up one sixty fourth. It'll in, be up in theory. Yes. Okay. This, so you're getting a splitting edge. And. Uh, once we've, we've got this cut in, that's all ready now to be sanded. Yeah. So we will take and we sand the insides. Now you do it with pretty good and smooth. So any type of uh, uh, splinter or something would, would kind of oh, mess yeah. it up? Yeah. That'll, yeah. that'll so that's give why you, a, you sand it. Yep, it'll yeah. give you a buzz. Or if you have a, a dip in here, yeah. sometimes you'll find when you're routing, if your router blade's not really sharp, you'll, you'll get a burn spot or a little divot. Yeah. You need to fill it in because it'll, you'll get a little buzz. You get that. It'll yeah. buzz that air. It'll, it disturbs that air when that air oh, travels yeah. through that flu. Yeah. And uh, it, it definitely makes a difference. You'll, you'll hear it if you have a hair hanging down. You'll hear that hair, especially in the, in the lower, yeah. the lower notes, like yep. the, the deep uh, D's or E's. It'll go, oh. and just you hear it. You go, yeah. oh, that's. So you probably run your finger down through there just to see if there's yep. any any yeah. rough spots or anything. Right through here. Yeah. Because now, once we've got this, what we do is we'll take that and. Here. Shellac the insides. Right. You'll run this in here like this. Yeah. And I put about about three coats. So I let that dry. Yeah. And I come back oh, probably 30 minutes. Put another coat, let it dry for about an hour, come back, put another coat. Okay. And that get three coats inside here. And what that's going to do is just seals that wood. Right. Then we come back after we've uh, put our coats of shellac in yeah. and we fine sand it. Okay, yeah. And then we'll glue it up. Yeah. So, you know, that, that takes overnight. We glue overnight. Right. So we can leave this set and we'll come back in a little while. We glued up, we used our Tight Bond 3. Right. Which is a good, it's a waterproof, watertight glue. I've never had a problem with it. Uh, in fact, it's strong enough that when you go to pull it apart, it'll break the wood. Before it breaks where it... it Before it breaks the seal. Right. But I learned a little secret. If you want to take a flute apart, let's say one comes apart on you for some reason. Yeah. I had an issue where a guy, one flute I've had an issue with, a guy was drinking yeah. and he introduced a lot of alcohol into the slow air chamber and it started <laughs> to split. I took it. I put it in the dryer because this kind of has a rubber base to it. Yeah. So I placed it on the rack in my wife's dryer, turned it on high, stuck it in the dryer. <laughs> that softened the glue oh, and so I could pull it apart. Separate, yeah. So now I've got two halves of the flute. I went in, touched it up, glued it back together, and it's just like brand new. Cool. 
So here's one that we've already turned. Wow. And it's ready to ready to go. And so this is oh yeah, you can mm -hmm. see the seam. It's got a real fine seam. So they all have to be like split pieces and put together and glued. The way I make them, there are guys that will take a, a block and they they bore them. Yeah. I I go the traditional way. Yeah. I just it's it's like I don't know, it's just yeah. it's tradition. Yeah. And I, I try and to you still do, do that by hand, like say someone had like a draw shave or, yeah. or, or you can you can or shape a, them all by a, hand. Or, or a crooked knife. You yep. just carve carve it out and give it like a rough texture yep. to it and stuff. When I started making them I did everything by hand. Yeah. And then I sold a few and I started buying tools so I make it easier. Right. You know, I mean it's but I, there's some things I still do tradition. I yeah. split it. And, you know, people say, well, then how did the how did the natives glue it back? They had hide glue. Oh, of course. Yeah. They had hoof glue. Hoof glue, yeah. You know, you, they, oh, yeah. they made glue a pitch. Yeah. You know, in the Northwest, they used That's a lot of hooves pitch. before. Yeah. yeah. And they would take and wrap it with uh, sinew. Yeah. And tie it together. Yeah. And you look at some of the old flutes, they'll have, they'll be wrapped with sinew. I've, I've seen right. some of them in the museums. Yeah. Once again, engineers have gotten involved, and, and they think the round hole here makes it better airflow. Right. Uh, today, so the air is coming up, coming up through here, yeah, through, through, through here. the chamber, and what and happens? Up through here, and then yep. down through here. Yep. It splits and, here on this edge. Yeah. But what you're doing here is you're blowing and you're compressing that air. Right. Which then, when it flows here, it settles it down, like we were talking all yeah. when I cut in the flute, settles the air across there splits it now you've got a little air coming out here and then the sound wave starts going down going through here yeah yeah The sound happens. Yeah. The the temperature affects the sound or the pitch of the flute. Right. Okay. If it's cold, they'll play flat. If it's yeah. hot, they play sharp. Even if you made it cold, it wouldn't like get to room temperature. The room temperature affects it. Oh yeah. Huh. Wow. And which doesn't if you're playing by yourself doesn't matter. Right. And then in in fact, what we'll do is we can uh, maybe take this one yeah. and we'll grandfather tune it. Okay. And by grandfather tuning, that's what they did in the old days. Go here, put on. So a you hole. go from the splitting edge. The split edge, yeah. If you if you look, they would go a breadth of the thumb. Yeah. Span to the hand. Right. Okay. That's where the hole is. Right. Breath of the thumb, yeah. The hole, yeah. Okay. Hand measurements. Hand it's span. grandfather yeah. tuning. So we go here, yeah. Put a hole, yeah. But do you mark them first, son? Yeah, we will. We'll, yeah. But I just uh, it, explain. This is grandfather tuning. Yeah. And when I first started, I bought. I got the books. I read everything. All the the uh, mathematics. I mean, it just yeah. All the engineering. It, yeah, it drives you nuts. Finally, yeah. I said, wait a minute. You know, grandfather tuning, go like this, so we go right here, boom, okay, okay. knuckle, knuckle. Oh, knuckle to knuckle? Yep. Knuckle, knuckle. Okay, thumb. Why thumb? It's just a little different knuckle. measurement. It's a little wider measurement. Oh, oh I, I see. Between the three mm -hmm. holes, the three upper holes and three lower holes. Knuckle. 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 Yeah. Knuckle. Knuckle. Cool. And then we can go here. Yeah. We can put holes here. Because I believe this will be, the way it's cut right now, it's cut to an F. Yeah. But if we go here and we put our 
So how did you holes. determine it's cut to an F? Well, I think when I when oh. I cut it and sounded. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> here, here's what we'll do. We'll uh, check it and see. 